If I'm going to go serious with uh, solar power using cheap uh, recycled batteries, then I'm going to need some kind of portable charging jig to hook up to various batteries I'm contemplating taking home in order to see if they can accept any kind of charge. And uh, what I need for that is something that can deliver quite a lot of current at a very high voltage so I can try and force some voltage some current into that battery no matter what. And the way I'm thinking about going about that is very simple. I'm just going to take a couple of these small lead acid batteries, hook up and hook him up hook him up in series for a twenty four volt system and uh, use some kind of low value power resistor on the output to limit the output current. I haven't done the calculations yet so I don't know what value I'll use. It will, it'll just be a long copper wire and build some kind of uh, high current switch and route some fat wires out of it and uh, maybe also put some kind of voltmeter on it an ammeter if I really can be bothered to calculate some kind of power shunt for it and yeah I'm going to use this long piece of MDF for some kind of basic box this is just an old shelf I used to have and this thing is very cumbersome to carry around so I'll just be glad to get rid of it and uh, that'll pretty much be it so let's get this thing started it's probably going to be one of my horrible one night projects that never really become very good well there we go I have outlined some rough cuts to make to this board here's the outline of the battery Find found some random heat sink that would stick on like that. Batteries go there like that. Walls come up around it. I'll see what kind of top I do. Haven't outlined it here yet. I'm not sure if I want a metal lid or if I want to use a wooden lid. Probably a wooden lid. Well, definitely a wooden lid, actually. But I'll make these cuts if I can find a saw somewhere around here. And uh, we'll see what this thing turns into. And then I'll start thinking about the lid. Well, that plan went to shit right away because I can't find a saw around here. There's a fair amount of tool sharing going on in this household, so it could be anywhere, and I can't be bothered to wait till tomorrow. So I guess we're going to have a little speaker tear down here tonight. Yeah. And there are the inheads. Won't be needing this anymore. 10 watts woofer. <laughs> 20 watts tweeter. I wonder which one's more bullshit. Place for made in Japan. It shorted my amp out. Damn it. That's why it's ain't a coil anymore. Shit. You know what? If there was ever a sign that something should be done, this is it. Both the heatsink and the batteries fit perfectly inside this. Nice. And there we go, resistors, heatsink. I didn't even have to drill any new holes because the two SDK circuits that used to go in this heatsink had pretty much the right footprint for these two ohm power resistors. 
that are just wired up in parallel to give me a current limit of yeah, around 10 amps. 12 if I get the perfect 12 volt voltage drop. And this should do nicely. These are 50 watt resistors, and this heatsink should be able to handle the 100 ish watts that will dissipate for, well, just a few seconds at a time, really. So, time to try and fit everything into a box. Heatsink installation 101. That'll do. I guess that's what you call a ground strap. Okay, let's try something new with a time <laughs> voiceover time lapse. Here I'm installing the output banana plugs, which are going to be connected to the battery under test. And now I'm actually making a switch to turn the battery charging on and off. I was going to use a little toggle switch to begin with, but I would have to either order one or use a relay to bypass it, so I just figured, yeah, I'll, I'll make an own. That'll work just as well. Now I'm just soldering some wires together, making the first version of the circuit. I actually ended up rebuilding this later on in order to make room for the battery discharge, so which you can see me testing the output there with a 12 volt light bulb. The voltage drop worked nicely. Now I'm drawing some holes in the front end, very crudely attaching it, making sure it fits together. It's kind of iffy with that very thin board that the speaker box is made out of. I ended up mounting it a couple more times than I wanted to. And now it's the next day, I cut a bunch of fidget hair for your, for your convenience. And uh, now I'm starting to work on the battery discharge switch, which, which I really was just an afterthought, which I came up with in bed last night. And now I'm actually drawing a little schematic in order to figure out how to put this entire t thing together because the way the charge switch was hooked up from before wouldn't have worked. And now I'm just soldering everything together. Had to disconnect and just uh, lengthen the cable there. I couldn't be bothered to recrimp it. And now I'm just stapling some <laughs> stapling these switches in place. They are actually surprisingly sturdy for just being some copper wire drawn through a hole in the side of a card thin box and there you can see me adding a very cheap multimeter to the top which is going to provide some voltage monitoring on the output more on that later and writing some stuff on it with my nice oil based white marker and taking my sweet time to figure out how to draw the schematic a bit more properly and just adding various warnings and schematic signs to it so that I'll have an idea about what I'm doing when I'm using it. This thing can probably sit for quite a while between uses, so I wouldn't want to forget how to actually use it. And there we have it. I added a little 
protective piece of copper wire here just to prevent these two from getting accidentally pushed down while transporting it or something. Just in case, better than nothing. And a whole lot of white text and a little schematic. So we can see that this thing is very very simple. We've just got these two switches and two batteries and a resistor. And switch one, the discharge switch is hooked just in series with the output and the resistor. So if I press this, I will short these through an, a 1 ohm resistor and put a maybe 10 amp load in a battery. And if I press the charge switch, it will hook my 1 ohm resistor up to the 24 volt battery bank and uh, try and charge the battery with, well, maybe 27 volts, or well, 24 volts nominal. And uh, going through a 1 ohm resistor, that is going to limit the current to around 10 amps for a 12 volt battery, or around 20 amps for a dead shot. So it's a pretty safe setup. I'm not going to be pushing any huge currents, nor making a huge amount of power in the resistors. And uh, that's pretty much it. I added a little charging connector there that doesn't go through the resistor. Just for the sake of it. And uh, I didn't catch it on camera, but uh, this very cheap and horrible multimeter has uh, a couple of holes drilled through the back of it, which is going into the case. You can see them coming in there. It's a purple and green, which goes straight to the output jacks. So this meter just monitors whatever is on the output, it's set to 25 volts and uh, these meters are really have this horrible scale on them where you have each little division is half a volt so halfway between 50 and 100 you've got uh, 75 so I just added in 7.5 volt, 12.5 12 volts and 17.5 and volts there to make it easier to read and I added these markers to indicate the charge current when I try and charge the battery. And these are just calculated by using Ohm's law with the nominal 24 volt battery bank and the ideal of one volt one ohm resistor. Uh, the batteries are usually a bit over 24 volts, and the resistors are usually a bit over one ohm. So it sh should work out fairly accurate, accurately, these meters are not very accurate as is, so it's not really a precision thing, it's just a nice thing to have, and, well, it's screwed onto there, so it's not going anywhere. Probably at some stage I'm going to try and take it away, or somebody else will, and they'll get, they'll get disappointed. Anyway, I thought we'd uh, hook this thing up to a couple of batteries to see just what... Uh, use I can ha get out of this thing because well it might not be immediately obvious what good this thing is going to do me so what I've got set up is one known good battery which has been discharged it's maybe 90% charged but it's going to want to eat a lot of current then I've got a known, known good battery which is fully charged and a known bad battery, which is, I don't know how, how charged it is, but it's at about 5 volts or so. So let's just get the camera on a tripod and see what happens. Okay, right now it's not hooked up to anything, and uh, that makes a little handy bonus feature with this meter. Since it's got a 25 volt range, I can see that my batteries are entirely charged above 25 volts. So that's good. And now if we hook up the known good battery which has been discharged, which is, we get to see the open circuit voltage of that battery. And it's reading right around 12.5 volts. So if this were a battery out in the field that I want to diagnose, I'd go, hey, oh good, that battery is kind of charged still. It has, maybe it hasn't been lying around for too long. And that's a pretty good thing. And going from that, I can press the discharge button, and 
we can see that the voltage really doesn't drop a whole lot. So this battery has got a reasonable internal resistance. Well, pretty good internal resistance actually. It's not even dropping down to 12 volts. So that's this battery would be a definite taker, but I can also try and charge it. And now we see that it uh, wants to be charged by almost 10 amps. So I know that it's uh, still going to perform even better when I get it charged up. Now let's try the known good battery, which is fully charged. And we can see that we've got a very high open so circuit voltage of 12.5 over 13 volts and if we discharge it it drops quite a bit but it's maybe at 12 volts so this looks good it's a pretty small battery for one was bigger but if we try and charge it it's not going to take a lot of charge because it's already saturated so that's not a diagnosis I'm going to make out in the field a lot probably since most batteries are going to be both bad and discharged but it's good to know I can diagnose a fully charged battery oh just made it vent there sorry little guy but now let's go to the known bad battery and this is where this thing really comes into use because right away we can see that we've got an open circuit voltage of around 5 volts and that's shit. However, the battery could just have been left uh, discharged after they tried to crank a huge truck for way too long, for instance. Or they accidentally shorted it out or something like that. And in that case, it should want to eat a lot of current. So, let's see what happens when we try and charge it. And it's not it's not drawing any current whatsoever our open circuit our voltage across this battery is over 20 volts well over 24 volts even and it's slowly starting to draw a bit of current but really this battery is pretty shit however if there are no shorted cells in the battery the voltage should still when we take it off the charger in a good battery with no shorted cells, the battery, the voltage should stop somewhere around 12 volts or so and then slowly drop down until it comes to its discharge state, but that clearly doesn't happen with this battery despite it actually drawing maybe one or two amps right now it just drops straight down again so this battery, I can tell that it's got shorted cells and it will be of no use whatsoever to me and if we try and discharge it, well, we get, what, 2 volts, something like that. So this is just a shit battery. And uh, diagnosing that, I could just use a car bulb and a multimeter but uh, for the discharge test, but the charge test is really where this thing comes into play, because I know I've got to about 10-15 amps that I can draw out of this thing into any reasonable or the uh, high voltage uh, 12 volt battery so I'm going to be able to tell a fair amount of about the state of a battery just by how much current it will accept as I find it lay lying around somewhere and that's really important because a dead battery that's sulfated or just generally shit it can look good, but if you can't, if it's not a transparent battery, you can't see the cells, and you can't really tell anything more than its uh, internal resistance while you're discharging it, which is going to be absolutely worthless if it's a battery that's got 11 volts in the terminals and completely empty. It's going to drop very low no matter what, but uh, a battery like that would accept charge. Well, it might take a little while, but it would after maybe a couple of minutes of pressing this switch it would start to accept charge that, that would indicate that it could be worth taking home so I hope you enjoyed it this thing is not pretty it was never intended to be pretty 
but it's going to be very useful. And the uh, reason I taped over all these contacts and stuff inside it is just so I can, without being too afraid to short everything out, just shove stuff in here and bring it along with me. Like that. So it doubles as a little handy carry case for whatever you might need. It looks like somebody forgot a multimeter on it. I don't think anybody's going to steal it either. Cheerio!